Shalom and welcome to the weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Hebrew. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 16 today. In the previous verses, the Lord has finally concluded his judgment saying that uh, against his people, saying that he's going to cast them away just as he cast uh, the northern kingdom away because of their idolatry and uh, sinfulness. He's going to do that to the southern kingdom now. And in verse 16, it's, it's a rather terrifying verse because now the Lord is going to address Jeremiah directly. Uh, Jeremiah, who has been his spokesman and, uh, on behalf of the Lord to the people for so long. And now he has something to say to Jeremiah, and it's rather startling. Let's read the text in Hebrew as we get started. Va'ata al titpalel ba'ad ha'am haze va'al tisa Ba'adam rina u tifila ve'al tifgabi ki eneni shomeach otach. Wow, this is a rather startling statement and it's uh, very, very serious. So the Lord starts, and you is our personal pronoun to, to MS. Uh, and the Lord is speaking directly to Jeremiah, and you understood Jeremiah. There's your negation. Do not something. Now, so let's see. So this And this is the immediate negation. It's not low, but this is the one we're going to find usually used with adjustives. So we have tit palel. And uh, this obviously by the form looks like an imperfect, but we know because of the context, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be adjustive. So what's adjustive? And it's going to be a hith pael. We can tell with this prefix here, this tit. So with a tau at the beginning and nothing at the end, it's going to be a 2ms. And as I said, it's a hitpael, hitpael, which is why you get uh, the, the other signs that look sort of like a pl, because it's based off of that stem. You get this pathak under the first consonant at the root. You get a doubling over here. Uh, and this is from the root palal, which means to pray or to inter intercede. I'll put parentheses around it because we don't usually find it in the cal. Um, so you, as for you, do not pray ba'ad. Now, this is a kind of a funny word. This is a word that originally was a substantive but came to be used more as a preposition. It had the idea of that which is around something else. So it took more of a, uh, a prepositional sense of on behalf of, um, uh, for the benefit of. Uh, so, do not pray on behalf of or for the benefit of the people, the article, the this one. So, do not pray on behalf of this people. And do not, same thing that we had over here. And once again, we have this, it's an imperfect, but it's actually going to be adjustive because of the al here being used as the equivalent of a negative imperative, uh, both both of these. Uh, and this is from the verb. What do we have here? This is uh, this is adjustive. It's going to be a 2ms again. And this one is a, uh, this is a cal. And it's from the verb nasa, which means to lift up. Nasa. And the nun, of course, is assimilated into that dagash there. So do not lift up on their behalf. So you, here's the same word that's being used as a preposition over here, this time with a, um, a 3MP suffix referring to the people. This is plural, even though people is singular, because this is a collective idea. So 3MP. Uh, and do not lift up on behalf of this people, rina, the rina is a word uh, which means a cry, a shout, and it's more frequently used in a joyful sense, but it doesn't necessarily have to have that sense, and here in this context, it does not have that sense. So it would mean here a lament or a wailing, so do not lift up on their behalf a wailing or a shout of, uh, of uh, compassion or lament, or, you get, this is literally and, tifila, uh, and this is the word for prayer, so do not lift up uh, on their behalf, either a lament or prayer, uh, and prayer or prayer in this context. And do not, once again, same thing we're going to have over here. And this is going to be a jussive. This is going to be a 2ms jussive. It's going to be a cow from paga. And paga has the idea of uh, meeting or encountering someone. Uh, and the someone is usually with the bait here, and then you have a pronoun suffix on it. So do not encounter me. But it has the sense of going to somebody to request or to entreat something. Uh, to plead on, on the behalf of someone else. So do not entreat me, do not plead with me, is the idea that, that's here. So the Lord is saying, stop praying for this people. And why is that? Because for a nini, 
This looks complicated, but it's really not. All you have here is the particle of non-existence. You remember this word, ain, one of the first words you probably learned in your vocabulary. It's the uh, counterpart to yesh, which means there is, ain means there isn't. And here you have a pronoun suffix, the first common singular suffix. So uh, literally, I am not, and it's used often with the participle. This is what you have here is a cow participle, masculine singular, from the verb shama, which means uh, to, to hear. So literally, I am not hearing, hearing whom? You. Uh, this looks like a two fs um, uh, pronoun suffix at the end, but it's actually a 2ms because we're right at the end of the verse and there's a pausal form here. So this is commonly uh, written this way instead. So the Lord's speaking to Jeremiah, of course, in the context. For I am not listening, I am not hearing you. So the Lord's saying, enough. Uh, it's not even worth interceding, praying for this people anymore, which Jeremiah has done for so long and in so many ways, despite uh, the opposition and the resistance of the people. And the Lord's saying, that's it now. The die has been cast. The judgment is coming. The time for intercession has passed. It's time for judgment now. Very, very, very sober words when the Lord tells his prophet to stop praying here. Well, let's go ahead and hide our work and look at a couple translations. There's not a lot of variation in them. Let's look, first of all, at the old King James, because uh, it's rather dramatic in that form. Therefore, pray not thou for this people. Say, pray not thou on behalf of this people, for this people. Neither lift up cry nor prayer for them. Neither make intercession to me. Boy, that's really sort of bang, bang, bang there. For I will not hear thee. So that's old language, but it's very dramatic, and it really gets the sense of what's going on here. A more modern translation, the New English Bible from uh, over in Britain. Offer up no prayer, Jeremiah. I mean, obviously his name is not in there, but the Lord is addressing you. That's Jeremiah. Offer up no prayer for this people. Raise no plea. Carry, lift up no plea or prayer on their behalf. And do not intercede with me, for I will not listen to you. See, both of these kind of put this in the future. I will not. Uh, it's actually even more of a immediate present. I am not listening to you. Uh, but to get good sense, you, we have to put it into the future there. Same thing with this last uh, translation here. This is the, uh, the New American Bible, Catholic edition, the revised edition. You now must not intercede for this people. Do not raise a cry or prayer in, the, in their behalf. Do not press me. Interesting way of putting, do not come to, and meet me, uh, to meet me, to encounter me, to plead with me, for I will not listen to you. As I said, the die has been cast and the judgment is coming. Very, very, very sober words when uh, a people get to that point that God even tells his, his servants to no longer pray for them. I'm not sure when, if we can ever say we come to that point, but uh, Jer Jeremiah was obviously taken to that point at, uh, at, at this point of his ministry. So very sober words. We'll check back with us soon as we continue working through Jeremiah 7 in the weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Hebrew. Shalom.